Thank you very much for now. And I have to apologize for, I've let, I think most of our speakers kind of go on a little longer than the allotted time. Uh, so my, my apologies uh, to, to the audience for, um, for not leaving as much time for our discussion at the end as I would like. Uh, but we are going to move towards, uh, towards that last phase of the program. And it's uh, my, my great pleasure to have Mohammed Baharun now uh, give his observations. Thank you very much. I'll try to get to the seven uh, uh, minutes mark, hopefully. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me and uh, welcome uh, to all of the uh, people who traveled the long way to be here in the UAE to be part of this discussion. Uh, the, the title of the discussion, and this is a, a sort of a warning I think we've heard, is the Middle East in the next five months. So That's right. One next Middle few East, months, yeah. Next few months. That was the title. Uh, Middle East uh, warning, nothing about this region is regional. Everything is global, and I think we've just heard that. Uh, so there's always global implications and everything. And uh, uh, five months we've already, or sorry, a few months, we've already heard that a month ago things could have changed, and I think this could stay. Uh, but let me talk about Gaza as an example. And this is, uh, uh, when it comes to the operation, it's a local operation. We've got Israeli troops, and the, uh, they are conducting an operation in, in Gaza, which is, uh, an occupied land, even though it's autonomous. So it's a local war, supposedly. But there's also a lot of regional fears. And we've heard uh, the fear about Iran or its proxy being involved, and this war could spill out, and that's one of those fears. But there are also international realities. And part of the international realities is that there's about 40,000 American troops assembled in, in, in the region. And we've got uh, uh, warships from the US, from the UK, from France, from Greece, in, in, in the region. And uh, we've also heard calls to turn the international coalition against ISIS to fight Hamas. So there is a reality here that this is already internationalized. We're afraid of regionalizing it, but in reality, it is internationalized. And that is going to affect us. Now, if we want to talk about the, what could happen in the few next month. And I think the current progress of the operation, and we've seen to the extent how many times uh, the ground operation has been either delayed or changed over the week, can tell us that this is going to be a lengthy operation. And with that length of time will come casualties in, in people. And that casualty of people, people would have an impact not only regionally but also internationally. Also, the objectives of the military, which is eliminating Hamas, is you know, very difficult to say at this point of time, we can call this mission a success, mission accomplished. It is very difficult to draw lines on when that mission has been accomplished. Again, that would draw a lot of time and would also uh, uh, affect uh, uh, the casualties. Uh, but also, there is this concept of those bridges of cooperation that we have been building is now regressing. So we've already seen the impact on countries like Turkey, already mentioned. Countries like Egypt has been warning that if people have been driven into Gaza, an operation across the borders can, to Israel, a response from the Israeli, could take us back to the time when there is war. You know, we're going back to the 1973. So uh, those bridges of cooperation are now being hugely challenged. And what it tells us that this, the clock in this region is ticking backwards. We're looking backwards when the terrorist organization that was considered a terrorist organization today, it's very difficult to discriminate it from the Palestinian people. And you can see people going out on the streets calling for free Palestine. No one says down to Hamas. So that area that between what is right and what is wrong, and it's not because of the virtue of what Hamas did, it's because of the virtue of the reaction to Hamas. And I think the, the concept of, of, of international law when it comes to wars come to mind, but it's the sheer understanding is that what do you do for peace? And I think this is the role of the armed struggle, I think is coming back. And Hamas is possibly now in the same position where PLO used to be during the Munich uh, attack. And, you know, this is now people are saying again that this is uh, uh, ISIS is different from Hamas because ISIS has occupied land, but Hamas did not occupy land, it is occupied. Those type of 
com you know, comparisons are now becoming common ground, which hasn't been two months ago or three months ago. And what we've heard several times here, and I think uh, His Excellency Fahmi was talking about the national identity. Uh, this is going back to become an identity conflict. And unfortunately, it's not a nation-based. It's a, a religious identity. It's a Jewish identity. And it's, it's quite you know, difficult when you see, uh, for instance, Secretary Blinken coming to Israel after the attack and say, I'm Jewish. I know what he's doing, but for the rest of the world, what they see is that this is now turning into a Jewish Muslims conflict. And that is a very difficult position to be in because it will bring back all of those identity conflicts that we have seen in the, in the past. So if you want to look not only to the next few months because it's you know, really very limited, what are the long-term impact in the next few years? So I think one of what we've heard is the detraction of the, of the West, of the global West, in front of the expansion of the global uh, South. It's not the North versus the South, it's the South versus the West. And we've heard this very clearly before, and I think this is a reality. If you look at the uh, uh, pattern of, of voting in the UN, this is quite obvious. And I, I think we shouldn't be slipping into that type when whatever is always connected to international community, to international norm, can be just looked at as this is just the Western norms. And it does not apply all the time. It applies in certain times. I mean, people would say, uh, you want Iran not to intervene, but the US is already intervening on the ground. And that's contradictory in, 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 when it comes to principles. And uh, we're also looking at the rise of the middle powers. Middle power states are now taking lead because the international leadership is not being regarded as something that is going to take us somewhere. And it's quite interesting uh, to see, for instance, countries like Saudi Arabia or the UAE celebrating the G77 over the G7 because they see that the future of the world order is to the middle and small powers organizing together, galvanizing a position together. But there is still opportunities, and I think one of those opportunities is... is uh, is the analogy Volker made uh, on the, what happened after 1973, which is the peace. Because any war, any war conducted is, is a tool. It is not an objective. And the objective of any war is peace. So how could we, peace be looked at in, in this? So uh, I think one of the major concepts that we can see today is that there is a failure of the concept of security at gunpoint. Weapons do not buy security. Security concept is changing. We have seen this here in the UAE after COVID-19. We've seen that with all of the military mind that you might have, it's not going to stop your people from dying. And we realize that walls is not going to buy security. It is roads that will create security. I don't think that this is a concept that is being seen inside Israel today as we see it here in this region. Uh, I think Hamas is in a position to do exactly what the PLO did at a certain point of time, exactly what the Houthis did recently, is turn from a resistance group into a state. And I think this is where we need an investment in statehood. The statehood not only of the Palestinian state, but also the statehood of Israel. Because Israel is our partner in peace. Hamas was not our partner in peace. But at this point of Time, it is difficult to have partner in peace who does not do their sh uh, uh, due share when it comes to uh, peace. And, uh, and I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. I might say something later on about what Iran uh, could be looking at, but I'll stop there. I really appreciate uh, you pointing out the fault lines uh, that are associated with this conflict uh, that extend uh, to different regions, not only this region, but to other parts of the world. It was interesting to me how you uh, set up a, an opposition between uh, the West and the South uh, in this case, when we talk about what is the rest, when we talk about the, the West versus the rest. Uh, we've had that located in China and Russia. We've had it located now in the South. I presume the global South you're referring to there, by, by, by that probably emerging nations. Um, 
I also found it interesting, your reference to Iran, uh, and it's the contrast with the United States. Uh, I mean, Iran, of course, has its proxies in the region, uh, so they're not official forces, but I found that interesting uh, parallel. But, um, I, you know, we, we are going to be coming back to this. Uh,